Selling on Walmart can kind of feel like taking a shot in the dark. You don't really know what sells and you don't know how many units of that item sell. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my exact criteria in order to be able to determine if a listing is selling. This will work for any business model, including retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, or wholesale, because these are the same principles across the board for determining if a listing is actually selling. Now, first things first, you do not need software in order to do this. You can actually use this with the information that Walmart gives you. However, I find having software helpful. So the two that I recommend are going to be DataSpark as well as Martyr, and they are both linked down into the description with discounts available if you want to try them. In order to understand if a listing is selling on Walmart, you also need to understand the indicators that Walmart provides in order to determine that information. When looking at a listing, I look at three things. First, I look at the badges to see if Walmart is actually showing if this product is a good seller. Second, I look at the number of reviews. And third, I also look at the number of sellers. Let's talk about Walmart badges. These are different displays that Walmart will put on a product listing in order for the buyer to determine if this listing is good by showing that a listing is a bestseller or that it sold 100 times in a, the past 30 days or that it's in 100 people's carts or anything like that. If you see this on a listing, this is information directly from Walmart and it is almost 100% accurate from what I've seen on my listings. So for example, I'm looking at these Neutrogena products on Walmart and you'll see this one says it's a bestseller. This one also says it's a bestseller and a lot of these say they are bestsellers. Here we have a couple of other ones. This one says a thousand plus bought since yesterday. So this is moving almost 500 units a day. And this is again, information directly from Walmart. Here we have in 200 people's carts. So it doesn't say how many people are buying it, but this is a good indicator that people are still buying that listing. And it goes on and on, as well as if you go to any of the product pages and you look at the best sellers, you'll see that Walmart will also display information such as that this product is a popular pick in a category or that the reviews are good or they will show you a lot of information in order to help you determine if a listing is selling. So here on this listing, immediately when I open it, I see that 100 bought since yesterday. So this means that this listing is probably selling around 100 a day or 50 a day, anywhere between there. And then it's also a bestseller and it's a popular pick for Neutrogena Clear Pore. Now, skincare products sell extremely well. They are also replenishables and people are going to be repeatedly buying them. The next thing that I look at are going to be the reviews. If you look at this other listing that I was looking at before, you'll see that it has 30 reviews, but it has none of the badges. So I really can't go on the badges in order to determine if this listing is selling because it doesn't have any. The way that I look at reviews is I'm looking at verified reviews. Walmart has a couple of different types of reviews. On this listing, we have 771 reviews. And if I wanted to go and see them, I would scroll all the way down and I would click view all reviews. And then from there, I'm going to sort from newest to oldest. So I can see the ones that were recently left. And I see that this is being reviewed almost every day, 7777, And all of these reviews are what Walmart determines as verified reviews, meaning that they were actually bought from real customers who are not incentivized or paid to leave a review. Additionally, if you scroll down on this listing, you'll see that there are seller verified purchases, as well as you have reviews that do not have a verified purchase or there are no other indicators in green. So these are actually reviews that are imported from other websites. You'll see that this one was originally posted on influencer.com and then it was imported to Walmart and then this one was left on Neutrogena.com. So these are not indicators that a product is selling. I do not count these in determining if a listing is selling. My rule of thumb is that one review with a verified purchase badge is equal to around 100 sales. So this listing is getting a verified purchase review every couple of days or so. So this listing is selling well over a thousand a month. But if we take a look at the Squishmallows listing and we put up 30 reviews and you'll see that none of these are verified. If we look at all of the reviews and we sort them from newest to oldest, you'll see that this listing does have a verified review, but this review was left in March of 2024. So going back to the rule of thumb that one verified purchase review is equal to 100 bought. So the way that I do it is I take the verified purchase and it equals roughly, like I said, 100 sales. And I spread that from when the review was left until the time that I'm looking at. So this was left in March and I'm looking at it in, in July. So it's been roughly around four months. So that means that this listing is selling probably around 25 times a month. So I just divide the 100 by the time frame from when I'm last looking at it. So if there was a verified purchase within a 90 day time span, that's equal to roughly 33 sales for each month. The last thing that I look at is the number of third party sellers. And I do this for two reasons. The first is that it can help you determine if you are able to sell it. And second, it will help you see if other sellers are actually selling it and if they are determining if it's worth it for them. Going back to our product examples, we can see that this listing is sold by 10 people. And if we look, we see that Walmart's on the listing. We also see that this seller is here, this seller is here. So that means that third party sellers are able to sell it and that they are, they are determining that it's worth it for them. If we go to this Squishmallows one and we take a look if anyone's selling it, you'll see that there are a couple of sellers. So again, it also means that we would be able to sell it. 
and it also means that it probably is worth it for us. You can also speed up this process by using the software that I mentioned earlier. So with a software called Martyr, it's going to show you all the information that we just talked about. It shows you the seller count. It also shows you the seller in the buy box. It also has a calculator in order for you to determine if you're going to be profitable, and it'll show you the price history as well as the verified reviews. So here you can see the verified percentage is 3.3. So roughly only like one or two of these reviews were verified, and it also shows you when they were left in terms of the time span since when you're looking at it. So I'm looking at it in July and there were no reviews that are verified in the past four months. However, we did see one in March, so it's been a while. So this listing is probably only selling like one or two times a month, if that. The other software that I use is called DataSpark, and it sits nicely right underneath the listing, and it shows you a lot of information. The two things that I look for are going to be the price and the buy box history, as well as the seller count, as well as I also look at the buy box winner. So this is going to show you who is winning the buy box, and it's going to help you determine if you can win the buy box. So first, I'm going to adjust my price to one month or three months, and then I'm going to turn off everything else except the buy box price, and I'm going to see if it's stable. So we see that the buy box price has been trending down a little bit, probably means that a lot of sellers are competing. So we have seven sellers, and as we determined before, this listing's not really selling. So that means that all these sellers are going to continuously lower their price in order to get a sale. So this is not a listing that I would jump on. And also, if you scroll down, you'll see that the number of sellers it has probably been increasing. So if we go to three months, and we look at the number of sellers. So the number of sellers is going to be right here. We'll see that the number of sellers is jumping from four to five, and now it sits at around eight sellers. So again, this listing is continuously increasing in sellers, but it doesn't have the sales volume to match that. So using those software, I can determine if a listing is actually worth buying and also roughly how many to buy. If a listing is selling 100 times per month and there are five sellers on there, if I add myself, I'm going to be six. So I might only want to get 10 to 15 units for a 30 day time span in order to be competitive and not have too many units sitting where I can't sell it. The same works on this listing. If we go to this listing and I open up Martyr, it says it's selling 2,431 times per month. It shows me the revenue, the price history, as well as how many sellers. So it looks like Walmart is dominating this buy box. They have a price of $7 and no one is even close to that. Also, you can go ahead and you can see that this is getting a ton of verified reviews. And using DataSpark, if we scroll over and we take a look at the buy box history, we can see that Walmart is dominating it with 99%. Even in the past three months, no one else is getting a single sale of this. So this would also be a listing that I would pass on. The last thing that I look at in order to determine if a listing is worth selling is I look at to see if Walmart is on the listing as well as if I'm gated or I need to get ungated in that listing. When we were looking at this Neutrogena listing, we saw that Walmart was absolutely dominating this buy box. There is no way that you can get a sale here unless you were selling it for probably like five bucks and you were also doing WFS in order to compete with their shipping times, which is just not going to be profitable for 99.9% .9 of sellers. So this would be a listing that I would not compete on Walmart. However, if you were going and you were looking six months out or three months out and you saw that the buy box winner was, let's say Walmart was 50% of the time and other third party sellers were winning it, then it would be a listing that I would be comfortable going and trying to compete against Walmart in, as well as even if Walmart is dominating at 100%. However, you can lower your price by two or $3 and still be comfortably within your profit margin that you're okay with. Then I would also compete with Walmart there. However, I wouldn't go heavy in terms of that product, I might only get like one or two or even five units just to see if it's worth it for me if I can actually get the buy box from Walmart. The last thing you need to do is you need to determine if you can actually sell this listing. So you don't want to do all of this research, find that it's selling, buy a thousand units, and then go and try list it on Walmart, and then all of a sudden you can't. So before you even list the product, make sure that you go right here on Martyr and you click sell, and then it's going to open up the sell page and you can list the item to see if you are gated in that product. And I have an entire video showing you how to get ungated for different brands, so be sure to click that right here. That's my exact criteria for determining if a listing is going to sell on Walmart. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to also check out the free course linked in the description as well as the pinned comment. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.